Hi, I'm Jim Terrell from Quick Blade Paddles and I'm excited to uh, do another stroke analysis. Uh, we've done another stroke analysis in the past, um, analyzing the stroke from a side perspective. Today we're going to add in some other perspectives and also a little outrigger canoe paddling. So, um, I thought it was important to try and um, look at it from another angle and uh, go over some other key things that, um, that weren't discussed in our last video as well as uh, introducing a couple of new athletes that you're going to see in these videos today. So the first paddler we're going to look at is Chase Kosterlitz from Florida. Uh, Chase has been uh, pretty, uh, pretty solid on the water in the last couple of years and, and have probably seen him uh, either in front of you or next to you, um, not too often behind you, um, unless you're really, really fast. <laughs> um, Chase has a pretty good stroke. Um, he's tall, he's really strong, and you can see he does a lot of things really well here. Chase, I'm going to stop it right here. As you see, this is what we've talked about in the past, this positive angle is really important. Um, you want to have that positive angle. You can see this angle as he's getting ready to, to set his blade is a very good positive angle. You'll see he has a straight line from his back shoulder to his pulling hand. Um, this is that power triangle that a lot of people talk about. Um, the uh, angle of the paddle is really good here. And you can see at this point is when you want to set that blade. You can see he does a good job of that. Notice his blade's fully buried out here, which is a good four to five feet ahead of his feet. Most people do not get the blade buried until they're nearly to their feet. And again, we've talked about this in the past. You can see there's very little slippage of the blade in the water. We're not pulling the blade through the water. We're pulling our boat or our board obviously past the submerged blade. So let's take a look at Chase and his next stroke. You can see on the exit, he pulls back a little bit long. Um, I'd like to see that exit a little bit sooner. Um, the board will keep its speed a little bit better in between strokes when you have an early exit. The key is getting your body mass going forward again. You can see the setup here is really nice. If you measure this out, you're going to notice he's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half feet per stroke, which is a really good distance per stroke. So you can see here again, Chase is very, this perpendicular angle here is when you're most effective in the stroke. That's usually when the paddle shaft is bending a little bit more. And you can see it's still well out in front of himself here, which is uh, allowing to get good body weight onto the paddle. Okay, the next paddler here is myself, and um, watch me tear myself apart here on this video. So, right there, I'm in contact with the water. Again, a similar paddle angle to Chase. This is what we're looking for, a straight line from the pulling hand to the shoulder. You don't want necessarily a perfectly straight top arm. A little bend is good, but it's important to not punch with the top hand. The first motion should be down, 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 down. And you can see right about here, I'm fully buried. Um, it'd be ideal to have that even a little farther forward if I could. And then right about here is when you want to start thinking about getting it out, okay? Let's see how I do. Again, a little bit long. It's starting to come out now. It's a little hard to see the blade at this point because of the white lines, but I would like to see a little earlier exit from myself there. I'm going to have to work on that. But uh, again, pretty consistent paddle angle here at the catch. Uh, let's see how I do. Fully buried at this point here. Pretty, pretty similar to the last stroke. Nice straight pulling arm. Relatively straight top arm. Not too much bend. Careful not to punch. And again, I think my biggest problem here is uh, the exit. I would like to see a little earlier exit. Get that rate up. Keep that rhythm and uh, now let the board decelerate in between strokes. Okay, the next paddler we're gonna look at is Candace Appleby. I'm sure most of you probably heard of Candace Appleby. She's uh, a four-time Battle of the Paddle winner. Um, she wins most every race she's in. Um, we practiced a couple different stances. Um, there's a stance that I did a couple years ago in a 200 meter sprint races down in San Diego that was, uh, I think Andre Niemeyer calls it the plunge stance or the split stance or the uh, high kneel C1 stance, whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's essentially where you have one foot out in front of the other rather than the traditional uh, feet side by side. So let's compare those two strokes. I'm going to play it through at full speed for you. She's going to get three strokes out of this. The thing okay. you'll notice is the, the start of her stroke, the paddle is almost vertical already. So it's not as much positive angle as I'd like to see, particularly in the split stance when you can support your, your front leg. And then once you engage, the hips do the driving and the powering of the stroke. And the hips sort of square up at the beginning and they unwind at the end. And that's where we would need Candace to make a slight adjustment. But you can see she's really able to get some body weight onto the paddle. And if you check the distance between strokes here, we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight feet in between strokes. Um, you have to realize also Candace is on a 12-6. 12-6 is 
So the, the, uh, the run per stroke is not going to be as long as if she were on a 14 or an unlimited board. So we're going to compare that to her standard stroke, which I think is probably um, as effective or more effective for her. She actually has almost a slightly more positive forward angle of the stroke when she starts. It's a full blade in right about here. So she's about two and a half to three feet ahead of her feet. Um, I like to coach a little bit longer um, power phase, meaning the blade to be entered a little bit farther forward. Um, the overall reach isn't as critical as when the heel of the blade is buried. When the blade is fully buried is when we really start to do the work and actually start to drive the board forward. See, but she's really able to get good body weight on the paddle. Um, a little bit of bend in the bottom arm here. Um, I'd like to see that get straightened out just a little bit. If you hang from a pull-up bar as long as you can, you're probably more likely to be able to hang with a straight arm longer than with a slightly bent arm. But Candace gets an awful lot of power and is pretty effective um, with just the way she paddles right now. So I'm not going to try and um, say that it's not good technique because it's working for her. Uh, let's measure the distance between strokes here with the standard stance. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half feet. So pretty close between split stance and regular stance, maybe a little bit more distance per stroke on her regular stance um, on this particular day. And, um, but you'll notice she really gets good run, um, good power, and all in all she has a very effective stroke. Larry Kane, those of you that don't know Larry, Larry is a Olympic champion, 1984, um, was on the Canadian National Canoe Team for years. Larry and I have known each other for over 30 years, and um, Larry's into stand-up paddling now, and those of you on the East Coast probably have taken a clinic or two from Larry. Um, Larry does also what we call a split stance, where he's got one foot a little bit ahead of the other foot, and um, when he changes sides, he'll actually sort of hop and, and switch feet, and, and what he does is he's able to effectively engage his hips more when he paddles. Um, he's able to set the blade and get some power from his legs by the um, rotation of the hips. You know, if you watch somebody throw a ball or you know throw a punch, you know the hips engage the motion, the body follows, and the arm is the last thing that goes through. Notice how vertical his paddle is getting. Okay, there's a few things. The reason you want a vertical paddle is you're able to stack the shoulders. If you look, his pulling shoulder and his top shoulder are relatively on a similar plane. If you watch the direction of his board, there's very little yawing. If you look up the definition of yaw, the vertical paddle will drive the board forward. Um, once the paddle is at a direction, an angle like this, and you apply power, it's going to yaw the board, make the board drift off course. Um, when the paddle is vertical, you're actually able to get some of your body weight transferred onto the paddle. When the paddle is not vertical, you won't be able to get the body weight onto the paddles effectively. Um, even those of you that choke down, um, I've noticed there's some definite mechanical advantages to choking down. Getting your pulling hand closer to the water will actually give you better leverage. And even by choking down, you'll notice that even the top guys like Connor and Kai and these guys, they still get a pretty vertical paddle from a front view perspective. You'll notice I've seen pictures of them and watched them paddle and they're very effectively getting the paddle straight up and down. Um, he probably runs, if any of you guys have followed Larry, I know I have, I've uh, ridden his wake for a little bit. He runs a really straight line. He does a lot less zigzagging than um, a lot of paddlers do. You notice the positive angle here. Larry has a very pronounced positive angle. Look at the travel on Larry right here. He's a big, strong guy. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half feet of travel in between strokes, which is pretty good. Okay, again, you'll notice with Anthony, here he is almost vertical as the blade is going in, which is very good. He's in. Okay, those of you that don't, don't know Anthony Bailey, he's a very skilled waterman. He's extremely good in the ocean. He's uh, getting to be a pretty strong competitor in flat water as well. Um, he's got superior balance, nice level running board. And you can see he has a very vertical stroke. You can see perfect right there, straight up and down. And he's really getting his body weight onto that paddle. And see how long he stays vertical here, see? That's what you want. The longer you can keep that vertical paddle during the, the power phase, the straighter you're going to run your course, and the less yawing is going to happen. Not yawing, but yawing. Oh, blade. Look at that. Perfect. Straight up and down. If I was to put a piece of paper on there, that looks pretty square to me. <laughs> Those of you from stand-up paddling who don't know what an OC1 is, OC1 stands for Outrigger Canoe, one person, an OC6. Outrigger canoe, six people. In Olympic canoe, they say C1 and C2, just for one man canoe and two man canoe. 
So here we go. Right now you're gonna see Chris Cornejo. Those of you that are from California, I think most of you know who Chris is. Chris is a pretty experienced paddler and was nice enough to come down with an outrigger canoe on this particular day. Here he is, nice and vertical. Same thing, look familiar. We got a straight line from the hand, very relatively straight arm to the shoulder. And outrigger, it's also important to keep the rotation. Um, some outrigger paddlers will have a little bending of the waist. That allows you to get a little bit of body weight on the paddle. There's some mixed uh, coaching techniques and philosophies out there with outrigger canoeing. An upright posture with more rotation in your stroke allows for maybe more efficient breath, better breathing. That leaning down, which is something more common in Olympic canoes, is a way to get some body weight on the paddle. Um, and a six man, when you got six guys having a smooth running canoe or an OC1, you know, the better, more effective you are putting body weight on your paddle, no matter how you engage your body, a smooth running boat is always helping. You don't want to be changing the water line. So anyway, I hope that uh, this information I gave you and some visual um, help here on the computer with the pipe and the things we do to try and uh, sort of give you a good visual uh, interpretation of what's going on with the stroke helps. Um, and again, uh, this is one man's opinion on, you know, good technique. You know, there's no one perfect way to paddle a stand-up paddleboard or an outrigger canoe for that matter. Uh, my background comes from different disciplines of canoeing over the years and having some coaches that are pretty knowledgeable um, and just some simple physics as well. Um, I got a little bit of background with, uh, with all those things. And the big things that I need people to realize when I'm teaching them is we are not, not pulling our paddle through the water. If you are, um, you're not doing it right. If you want to pull your paddle through the water, just turn it around, put the handle in the water. It'll go through the water much easier. Um, we are trying to engage the bigger muscles of the body, meaning the legs, the hips, the upper body. That's why I try and teach um, rotation and hip rotation. I'm also trying to emphasize that um, standing is not necessarily any more effective than sitting. Um, Olympic canoes evolved into high kneel canoeing. Um, we found putting one knee down in a canoe with one leg in front of the other was a very effective way to make Olympic style canoes go really fast in both sprints and distance paddling. So the, uh, the techniques that are coming out from these younger guys coming up instinctively, um, particularly the, the young guys out of Maui, um, I'm learning from them actually, you know, seeing what they're doing. Um, traditionally, I wouldn't teach somebody to not put the top hand on top of the handle, but um, a lot of the young guys are doing that and I'm experimenting with that. And there are some advantages mechanically to that. So, um, you know, you'll see guys squatting down, getting lower, getting their hips lower to the, to the water, and actually able to generate a lot of torque um, doing that. The question is, is uh, how are you going to evolve and adapt to that? Similar to like a speed skater. Uh, if I was to just learn how to speed skate, I don't think I'd be able to stay in a tuck as well as uh, the top speed skater guys do right now for hours at a time in distance speed skating. But uh, once you train your body to do that, it's, um, it's rather easy for them. So um, stand-up paddling, same thing. You have to, um, any change in your technique may make you uh, slower at first, but after you adapt to the change and get your muscles used to that new motion, can be more effective. So, so hopefully this stuff helps. If anything, help you think about it a little bit and make your own decisions on uh, what works for you and what doesn't. So have fun, train hard, go fast, and have fun.